Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N Y. And the second word is and, spelled A N D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Well, we have a cute, uh, funny, interesting coincidence miracle to start out with today. Uh, it has to do with me, yours truly. I was giving a small talk to uh, about three people. I was passing out cards about uh, our books and our radio shows. And I was answering their questions, and uh, it was got to be a pretty lively discussion. And it, while I was talking to the three people... Uh, I lost my train of thought. I had a lot of topics to cover in a short period of time, and that can happen even to the best of us, but I lost my train of thought, and what I wanted to cover uh, escaped me. So I asked Jesus in my mind, Lord, what should I do? And I got inspired to ask the person in the middle of the three people, look at the person in the middle, and ask them to ask me a question. So I said, excuse me, but at this point, I need to ask you to do me a favor. Please ask me a question uh, so I can move on from this point. And she looked at me and she said, well, based on what you've said so far, I guess I'm going to have to pause and take a minute and I'm going to have to ask God first what he wants me to ask you. And the reason why this was such a wonderful coincidence miracle is <laughs> because the point I was supposed to be covering next was exactly what she just asked. I mean, exactly to the to the word. And so God has a sense of humor. Apparently, while I was covering all these topics, God wanted to show me that he was present with us. And I, I was glad about that. I, I appreciate him doing that. Uh, I was not sure, <laughs> answering a lot of questions, and they were bombarding me with things whether I was, you know, doing everything I should have done and said everything correctly. So so God intervened, and what happened was he took out of my mind what I was going to say. And what I was going to say is that the most important thing that we need to do when we're talking to God and asking God questions and trying to do his will is to simply sit down calmly, quietly, and ask God questions and listen to his answers. Uh, and I have not found a case yet in my life where I've asked God a question and I did not get an answer. And sometimes the answer might be, ask me again next week, or it might be, uh, wait till 2 o'clock, um, or you don't need to know that now, I'll, I'll tell you later. But uh, he always answers, uh, it just may not be the answer that I'm looking for at the moment. But this was a beautiful miracle for me, I must tell you. It convinced me that God was with me, he was working in my mind. Uh, 
because she asked the exact question uh, of what I was going to be explaining that we needed to do. And I told all three of them what I just told you. I told them that this had just happened, and they were somewhat amazed, but I was vastly amazed. Our next coincidence miracle is from a listener who tells us that um, she, about 15 years ago, uh, she had a neighbor who lived alone, was a single person, and they were going through a terrible period in their life um, where they couldn't get a job, uh, they didn't have any friends in town, and so the person writing to us said uh, they reached out to them, uh, they gave them a rosary, they uh, taught them how to say the rosary. Um, they promised they would pray for them. Uh, they quoted a couple of meaningful scriptures that, you know, you can confide in God and you can trust God and you can rely rely on God, tried to encourage them to trust God. Um, and they recently, this is like 15 years ago, but they recently, they were having a bad period. Uh, they were going through some negative things in their life and they were battling and struggling with and they were wondering if, you know, they had done some things in their life that were valuable or not. They started to doubt that things that they did in their own life had any value. And they got a letter in the mail from this prior person that they had talked to 15 years ago. And they said they got a five-page letter, five-page letter explaining how them giving the rosary to that person and the scriptures... And by the way, uh, saying hello to them often, uh, they used to go out of their way to go knock on the door and say, how are you doing? Because they were neighbors, how are things going, etc. So she would like maybe once or twice a week ask this neighbor who was having problems 15 years ago, once or twice a week, how are you doing? And show some honest concern. And she really did care. But she'd forgotten about all this. Uh, she, actually, she's moved this was 15 years ago, and she moved away from there like 10 years ago. She, she hasn't seen the person. But she gets this wonderful letter while she's having a, a humdrum week of uh, negativity and sadness and troubles of her own. This five-page letter explaining how she changed someone's life and gave them hope and encouragement, uh, gave them some advice about looking for work, and actually that it did help them get a job, etc., so I'm so delighted to share this with you because I think all of us have these cases where we have a bad day or a bad week, but all of us also, we do some good things in our lives and, you know, we need to remember that we all have ups and downs and I guess we need to all try to do God's will, to reach out to other people, be loving and kind. I think there's an old adage, you know, smile at people because you don't know what kind of a terrible day they're having and this is a good example of that for us. Our next coincidence miracle is about a man who was going to get his ears examined because he was having some difficulties hearing in certain cases and certain kinds of uh, environments. And he was troubled about it, concerned about it. You know, it's not something to treat lightly, but he, he set up an appointment to get his hearing checked. And uh, the morning that he was leaving to go see the doctor, he says as he pulled out of his driveway... He pulled out of his driveway, and he wound up following a car that had a license plate number 777. And I'm sure you've heard that, heard this many times where several people have told us they pull out of their driveway and they pull in back of a car with a license plate number 777, which indicates that's a holy number. Uh, it's God's holy number. Uh, it indicates that God is leading you. He, he, he came by with a car or sent you a car to follow, uh, to remind you that he's leading you to the doctor. And what was so fascinating for this person was that when they left the doctor's office at the end of the day or the end of their appointment, as they pulled out of the doctor's dry, uh, a parking lot, out of the driveway, again, another car went by and they followed another car with three sevens away from the doctor's office. I got to tell you, that's a fantastic experience. I've had things like that happen to me, and I'm sure some of you have also had that experience. But to have three sevens uh, lead you when you pull out of your driveway to go somewhere and then have another car with three sevens lead you back on the way home as you're leaving that, you know, the doctor's office, truly a significant coincidence miracle uh, to be publicized. Our next coincidence miracle is something that I experienced recently. 
you know, I do a lot of evangelizing uh, to publicize the two books I wrote and our radio show and a lot of lectures I've given. So I hand out these little business cards to people throughout my day, wherever I am. Uh, and the little card tells them a lot about, you know, my mission and the book and our radio shows, etc. And when I do that, I, I do that a lot. I think I average maybe four people a day on average that I'm talking to. Um, when I do that, I get occasions where I meet people who say, uh, pardon me, but I don't want to talk about religion. I don't want to talk about God. Um, I have my own faith, my own, my own beliefs. I don't belong to any church. I don't belong to any religion. Uh, I've had other people trying to convince me to do things their way, and I'm really not interested. I have my own methods, and I have I don't need to have people uh, preaching to me. So you get a lot of that from people who have this, uh, and they're called the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, nuns, meaning they have no no religion. They're not affiliated. They don't want to know about God. They don't want to talk about the Bible. They just don't want to get involved with anything uh, regarding God or religions. And so there are typically a lot of people call them the nuns, spelled N-O-N-E-S, meaning nothing, etc. And so I had to go to a, a wake about uh, for a friend uh, who had passed away. And uh, I, I had an experience like that uh, maybe a couple days before the wake. And when I got to the wake, I met a friend of mine who was at the wake who also has a radio show uh, in a different state. But he was visiting uh, at the wake. And it was good to see him. I hadn't seen him for a couple of years. And interesting, and coincidentally, he started telling me about how he's running into a lot of nuns, N-O-N-E-S, and how he talks to them and what he says to them, etc. So we had a wonderful discussion. It was providential. It was a coincidental miracle because we were both experiencing this problem. And he brought up his points of view, etc. So we kind of got a consensus out of this. Our awareness, so both of us have been uh, evangelizing for well over 50 years now. Uh, and so our consensus opinion is that people are calling themselves nuns and behaving like nuns because no one's ever really explained to them the essence of God and the essence of religion, which is all wonderful, terrific, great, happy news. You know, people are preaching negativity to them and problems and all the got to do's and the to do lists and don't do this and the, you know, don't do's and don't do's. And, and so what happens is a lot of people, especially younger people who haven't had any training in religion at all, what they hear is, oh my God, I, these people are giving me all of these things to do and I'm already so busy. You know, I'm going to college, I'm working two jobs all kinds of, you know, everybody's very busy in our culture these days. And they get met by people who are evangelizing them and telling them, you know, things that are going to make them have 40 hours a week uh, of work to do if they want to become a friend of God. So I think this proves uh, the value of this radio show. And hopefully if we do it correctly, it will be valuable. You know, we try to preach to people some, a very simple message. God made you to be his friend. He was all alone once. Uh, he didn't need to make us. He had everything he needed. He could make anything he wanted. But he made us because he wanted friends. And all we have to do is go to him and talk to him like a friend, ask him questions, knowing he's all wise, all knowing he can do anything he wants, and treat him like a friend. That's all we have to do. He'll tell you what church to go to. He'll tell you what Bible to read. He'll tell you when to read a Bible. All you got to do is acknowledge he's present with you all day long. You know, don't forget that he's present there uh, and talk to him. Have discussions with him and he'll talk back to you. And, and that's the whole thrust of this show. So I hope uh, that's a good takeaway for everybody today. Don't go out and preach and evangelize so much as tell people God is their friend and he wants to talk to them. And please talk to God. Ask him questions. He loves you. He wants to talk to you. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Music.